Welcome back to Natural One, the YouTube channel that's about as exciting as a lukewarm soda. But hey, you're here and so are we. Today we're at it again, using our passable charm to take iconic characters and force fit them into the 5e rule set. So without further ado, let's dive into the gritty world of Sony's almost Marvel Universe and introduce the one, the only, the brain-munching, web-slinging, anti-hero juggernaut, Venom. He's got the strength, the symbiote, and a serious case of the munchies. Now that's what you look for in a character. Let's get into it. You come in here again. In fact, you go anywhere in the city preying on innocent people and we will find you and eat both your arms and then both of your legs and then we will eat your face right off your head. Do you understand? Venom is a symbiote that decided to attach himself to some guy that he found, and he's literally just some black goo from space. How the hell do you stat that? No, really, how do you stat that? Wait, you came to the video expecting me to do that for you? Alright, alright, I'll try my best. Fine, here you go. I guess we'll start out with a 15 in strength. Venom's strength is off the charts, like lifting cars and throwing them at people level strong. He's the kind of guy or symbiote you call when you need a building moved or demolished. Next, I'm thinking of 14 in Constitution. He's built like a tank with the healing factor of a comic book character. Oh, wait, he is one. That makes sense then. Venom can take a beating and keep coming back for more, making him the definition of hard to kill. Okay, I'm gonna get weird here. A 13 in Charisma. Venom's got a presence that's hard to ignore. Sure, it's mostly because he's terrifying, but who needs to be likable when you can be a downright piss your pants kind of intimidating? Okay, next up, a 12 in Dex. For a hulking beast with a penchant for violence, Venom's surprisingly nimble. He's like a freight train with the agility of a cat, capable of leaping across rooftops and dodging incoming fire. He doesn't like fire. I'm torn here, but I think we'll put the 10 in Wisdom. Venom's instincts are sharp, but his moral compass is... Let's put it as flexible. He's got a good head on his shoulders, but that head isn't his. It's Eddie's, so don't expect him to always make the right call. So that leaves the 8 for Intelligence. Let's just say thinking isn't Venom's favorite pastime. He's more into smashing first and asking questions never, but with muscles like his, who needs brains? How do you even know about that? I know everything, Eddie. You do? Everything about you. How? I am inside your head. You are a loser, Eddie. Expecting another standard human build? Well, think again. We're not playing as Eddie Brock. He's just the unfortunate commoner you've chosen to host your true form in. Eddie's a regular Joe. A uh, nobody, but you? You're something much more. If you can swing it, use the sidekick rules to keep this hapless human around. If not, just grab the nearest commoner and offer them a deal they can't refuse. Eddie's the face everyone sees, but make no mistake, you're the one pulling the strings. We're building Venom, an amorphous blob of space goo. And that can only be one race. Plasmoid. Forget getting stuck in tight spots. Amorphous lets you slip through anything as narrow as an inch. Acid and poison? Not a problem when you're naturally resistant. Plus, you can mold your form into whatever shape you need, whether it's just a head to yell at your incompetent host or a full body wrapped around that human you grabbed. With dark vision and the ability to hold your breath for an hour, you're built for survival. Eddie's the meat suit, but you're the entity that makes things happen. And I know you're thinking, what background is he going to take? I was getting to it. Give me a moment. If you're going to be Venom, an entity from another world, Far Traveler is the perfect fit. With a perspective that's completely alien, you've got the insight to see through the lies and deceptions of this strange planet, and your perception is heightened, allowing you to detect threats before Eddie even knows they're there. As for Cobbler's tools, even a symbiote knows the value of the strongest tools in the game. I really don't think I need to explain more here. Eyes, lungs, pancreas, so many snacks, so little time. Venom's been itching to unleash that primal rage, and as a level 1 barbarian, you're finally letting him. Forget armor, that's for the weak, fleshy meat sacks. With unarmored defense, your skin's tougher than any metal suit. And when the rage kicks in, you're dishing out destruction like it's your favorite hobby. Venom's got your back. Well, actually, he's got all of you, so it's time to tear through anyone dumb enough to get in your way. Level 2 turns dial up to 11 with danger sense, letting you avoid danger like it's your job. Venom's instincts are on overdrive, making sure nothing catches you off guard. Then there's Reckless Attack, perfect when Venom's screaming at you to stop holding back. Go ahead, swing with everything you've got, and let the enemy regret ever crossing you. Just know, with Venom in control, the carnage is only beginning. Get it? Carnage? Like the movie? 
I'm hilarious. Level 3 is where things get beastly. Well, more like symbiotically terrifying. With Form of the Beast, when you rage, Venom's true power manifests. Whether it's a massive razor tooth grin that heals with every bite, or claws that rip through enemies like tissue paper, your foes are in for a world of hurt. And don't forget that tail, or whatever appendage you choose to flavor it as, so long as it is perfect for slapping away anyone who dares to strike back. Level 4 means it's time to get stronger, faster, meaner. Venom's whispering in your ear, and you're listening. Ability score improvement? That's plus 2 to strength. Because you know what they say? If brute force doesn't solve it, you're not using enough. Venom's making sure every punch, every swing, and every smackdown hits with a powerful wrecking ball. And trust me, with Venom, there's no such thing as overkill. On level 5, you're not just hitting harder, you're hitting twice as hard thanks to extra attack. Venom's loving this, giving you the speed and ferocity to tear through opponents like paper. And with fast movement, your speed kicks up a notch, making sure you're always in the thick of the action. Venom's hungry, and now you can feed that hunger twice as fast. At level 6, the bestial soul within you, and by that I mean Venom, starts flexing its magical muscles. Your natural weapons, courtesy of your form of the beast, now count as magical for the purpose of slicing through resistances and immunities. That's right, not even magic resistance can stop Venom now. And because Venom's all about adaptability, you can now choose to climb any surface, even upside down like the creepy monster you are, or jump so far and hide put a kangaroo to shame. Either way, Venom's making sure no obstacles stand in your way. Alright, time to crank up the weird. At level 7, we're stepping into Warlock territory, because Venom needs some cosmic horror. First off, breaking up Eldritch Blast, think of it as your new go-to for symbiote web-slinging, only this time it's packing a bit more punch. Then there's Mei-Chan for when Venom wants to grab something, or someone, with that extra gooey tendril. False Life adds that I'm not dead yet layer of toughness, and Arms of Fadar turn Venom into a whirling dervish of tentacles and chaos. And then there's Form of Dread. Activate this bad boy, and you're not just Venom, you're the thing that goes bump in the night. Extra hit points? Check. Fear on demand? Double check. Immune to fear? You bet. It's Venom Unleashed with no breaks, no rules, and definitely no mercy. At level 8, things get a little freaky, but in a good way. Gaze of Two Minds lets you and Eddie share thoughts like never before. See what Eddie sees, do what Venom does. It's like having a front row seat to your own mayhem. And then there's Armor of Agathis. Venom's symbiote suit just got a serious upgrade. Anyone tries to hurt you, they're going to regret it real fast. It's a perfect mix of try me and big mistake. At level 9, we're stepping up Venom's game with Pact of the Blade. Because why stick to fists when you can have a weapon of pure symbiote energy? It's magical, it's deadly, and it's whatever you need it to be. And with improved pack weapon, that weapon becomes your go-to for both smashing and spellcasting, giving you a plus one boost to everything that matters. And I'm telling you what matters is a giant goose sword. Trust me. And then there's Hold Person, for those moments when someone thinks they can get away. Spoiler alert, they can't. Venom's got them right where he wants them, and they're not moving until he says so. Level 10 and we're cranking up the symbiote power. Pumping Constitution by plus 2 makes Venom even harder to kill, while Lightning Lore adds a new trick to your bag, getting enemies right into your grasp. And Borrowed Knowledge, that's Venom taking a peek into Eddie's brain for some extra skills when the situation calls for it. It's all about adaptability with a side of pure, unfiltered power. Your world is not so ugly after all. I'm almost sorry to see it end. At level 11, we're diving deeper into Warlock's side of things with Eldritch Smite, because when Venom hits, he hits hard. This invocation lets you throw down extra force damage and even knock enemies prone, just to remind them who's boss. And you can even use it in Rage, you lucky viewer you. For spells, with Spirit Shroud, you're bringing the pain to anyone who dares get close, dealing extra damage and keeping them from running away. It's Venom going all in, no holds barred. Level 12 and Venom stops eating those pesky human things like food, water, or air. Because who needs that when you've got a host to do it for you? Thanks to Grave Touch, you're all about that necrotic damage life now. Swapping out your regular damage for something that'll really leave a mark. And let's not forget when you're in Form of Dread, you're rolling an extra die of necrotic damage. Make sure your enemies really feel the hurt. And with Vampiric Touch, you're sucking the life out of your foes to keep yourself going strong. Venom's basically an unstoppable force of nature at this point. Lucky level 13, where Venom gets even more terrifying. We're picking up the Lance Lethargy Invocation, because nothing says you're screwed, quite like slowing down your enemies with every hit. And if that wasn't enough, Cause Fear lets you cast a little shadow of doubt into the hearts of your enemies. I can promise that if you had to fight a big goo guy, you'd be scared too. Level 14 is where Venom gets even deadlier. We're boosting the dexterity and charisma by plus one each, making you quicker on your feet and more intimidating than ever. And with Death Ward on your side, Venom's not just hard to kill, he's impossible to take down. Just when they think they've got you, you're right back in the fight, 
ready to dish out more symbiote fuel pain. Level 15 and Venom's taken to the skies with Otherworldly Leap. Who needs webs where you can just jump across the battlefield in a single bound? I keep telling the guys who run the channel this, but they keep telling me it's not good enough and this is where the channel isn't monetized yet. Okay, okay, I'll get back to work, whatever. With Hold Monster, you're locking down those bigger threats, keeping them right where you want them while you plan your next move. Probably biting their head off. Let's be real. That's about 95% of Venom's plan. At level 16, Venom's connection to Necrotic Energy reaches its peak with Necrotic Husk. You've got resistance to Necrotic Damage, but why stop there? In Form of Dread, you're fully immune to it. And if you get knocked to 0 HP, joke's on them, you drop to 1 HP instead. Explode with Necrotic Energy and leave your enemy scrambling as they take 2d10 plus your Warlock level in damage. Venom's here to play, and he's not playing fair. Oh, and just because we're feeling cheeky, let's grab True Strike. You know, the best cantrip in the game? Even if everyone else says it's not worth it, clearly they don't know Venom loves true, unadulterated power. At level 17, Venom's taking a detour into Paladin territory, but don't expect anything holy here, just more ways to mess with his enemies. With Divine Sense, Venom's got a built-in detector for anything creepy crawling within 60 feet. Think of it as the ultimate radar for anything that gives off bad vibes. And with Lay on Hands, Venom can funnel his energy to get a bit of regeneration, or to patch up Eddie when the going gets tough. He likes this particular meat and bones creature and would rather not find a new host. At level 18, Venom's power take another twist with blind fighting. Now, he's not just a monster in the light, but in the dark too. This ability gives him a 10 foot blind sight, so enemies thinking they can sneak around him in the shadows are in for a rude awakening. Then we've got Divine Smite, but let's be honest, it's just Venom supercharging his attacks with some symbiote fuel rage, leaving anyone in his path wishing they'd never crossed him. At level 19, Venom's taking a darker turn as he embraces the Oathbreaker path. Because, um, you know he made a oath to take over Earth with the rest of the aliens, and then he broke it? I think that should cover us. Onto the abilities. Dreadful Aspect. Wait, doesn't he already have this? Let me check the script. Blah, blah, blah. Random YouTube stuff. Subscribe plug. Oh, here it is. Nope. It's just Form of Dread. Totally different. Because this fear is AoE. Good one, Wizards of the Coast. Pair that with Inflict Wounds to add a little extra necrotic damage thing to his strikes. And you've got a Venom who's even more dangerous than before. And while Divine Health makes him immune to disease, let's be real. Venom's never been the sickly type. That's more of Eddie's thing. At level 20, Venom's closing the chapter on this build with the fittingly brutal addition, the Slasher Feet. This little gem ensures that any creature unlucky to get slashed by Venom is going to be hobbling away, or at least trying to, since their speed gets cut by 10 feet. And if Venom lands a crit, the target's in for a world of hurt, with data disadvantage on all their attacks until the start of Venom's next turn. Oh, and a little boost of dexterity makes him even quicker on his feet, just in case anyone thought they could outrun him. And to top it off, Heroism keeps Venom charging headfirst into danger. A nice HP buffer to keep him in the fight longer. What the hell are you? We are Venom. Venom is a hulking, goofy nightmare with a serious appetite for destruction. But he's not just some mindless brute. He's got powers that make him even the toughest opponents think twice before stepping up. Let's dive into what makes Venom such a terrifying force. Venom doesn't just attack, he devours. With his claws, bites, or even a conjured weapon of pure nightmare fuel, Venom hits like a freight train. Every strike is magical, often infused with necrotic energy. And when he's really feeling it, he can stack Eldritch Smite with regular Smite for some truly outrageous Nova damage. Add in bonus damage from Grave Touch, and you've got a recipe for carnage. He is tanky. Venom's got 16 AC, 201 hit points and an absurd amount of ways to keep himself alive temporary hit points he's got him in spades thanks to false life armor of Agathus, and dreadful aspect healing take your pick cure wounds lay on hands vampiric touch or just a good old-fashioned bite plus with resistance to carotic bludgeoning piercing slashing acid poison and disease venom's not going down easy and don't forget you've got to kill him three times thanks to necrotic husk and Death Ward. Yeah, good luck with that. He's all over the place. Literally. Venom's got 40 feet of base speed, can climb walls like a spider, and with Bestial Soul, he can jump 111 feet high. That's not just mobility, that's domination. He can lock enemies down, slow them to a crawl, or even gank them back when they try to escape. The battlefield isn't just where Venom fights, it's his playground. Venom is the stuff of nightmares, and he knows it. 
with Wrathful Smite and Cause Fear, plus with both Form of Dread from Warlock and Dreadful Aspect from v Paladin, Venom's very presence can send enemies running. Stack on his Intimidation proficiency, and he's a walking horror show that leaves even the bravest souls shaking in their boots. Even a creature as formidable as Venom has its weaknesses. Here's where Eddie Brock and his symbiotic partner might find themselves struggling. While Venom might be a powerhouse, he's not winning any trivia contests. His low intelligence and wisdom mean he's easy prey for anyone with a bit of cunning. When strategy is required, Venom's solution is usually just to hit it harder. Subtlety and finesse, yeah, those are lost on him. Venom's got a ton of power. That doesn't mix. Rage doesn't play nice with concentration spells. If he's in full-on berserker mode, spells like Heroism and Shield of Faith are off the table. It's a classic case of too many powers, not enough focus. Sometimes brute force just isn't the answer, but I'm not going to be the one to tell him you guys can do that. Venom might be all-powerful, but Eddie? He's just a stupid fleshy human who needs to eat, sleep, and avoid paper cuts. All that power on him, he's still vulnerable to a bad case on the Mondays. Some days, it's hard to be an alien symbiote. That's all for a Venom build. If you're ready to bite some heads off in-game, please don't do that in real life, or just want to freak out your party by constantly talking to yourself, this build's for you. Got a character you want us to throw into the D&D blender? Drop it in the comments. But if it involves symbiotes and chocolate, we're not interested. If you enjoyed this roller coaster of rage, smash that like button. If you didn't, well, Venom thinks that's really unfortunate for you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're always in the loop for our next mantra spill. And remember, you can get this build and all of our previous ones for free on Patreon, because we're just that awesome and we love you guys that much. Well, I'm going to go raid my neighbor's fridge, so I'll guys, catch you guys later. Thanks for watching, keep those dice rolling, and until next time, we'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>